This next, next segment is going to be on examination of the musculoskeletal system. Our volunteer for today is Jenny. She's a 14-year-old Appaloosa mare. Now, you're going to notice that the exam with the musculoskeletal system is going to look a lot like the neurologic exam. And that's for good reason, because these two systems are very tightly integrated. On our history, often the client's calling you out because they've noticed something uh, that relates to the um, musculoskeletal system that they've noticed on the horse. Certainly, uh, you know, the reason why we have horses is usually to do something athletic with them. I mean, some people have them just to have as pets, but most of the time people would like to, uh, you know, ride them or something like that. So a lot, of, a lot of our complaints are musculoskeletal. Now, just like we always do, the first thing is observation. You know, looking at them, feeling them all over. Certainly in a musculoskeletal exam, you need to start by, you know, running your hands over the horse, looking and seeing if there's anything really obvious going on that, you know, you will miss if once you start to focus right down. So I'm going to walk all the way around Jenny here and, you know, make sure that there's not something really truly glaring before I start to focus in on uh, a specific part of her body. Now let's start on some of the specific palpations we do with our examination. Probably we'll start on the front part of the horse here. We want to start with the neck. Um, Dr. Forney is going to palpate down the cervical vertebrae here. She's going to feel for alignment of the vertebrae, any abnormalities she can feel there. Also consistency of the muscle um, and making sure that there's no guarding of the muscle, tenseness of the muscle. It's back over the top of the scapula now. Uh, again, both sides feeling how that um, feels, the withers. Coming down the spine of the scapula with the left hand. Okay. Coming down to the shoulder joint here. Then she'll move back to the elbow joint. It's right there at the point of the elbow. As she comes down the forearm, her left hand is over the, what we call the extensor surface of the forearm, so the extensor muscles are there. Her right hand is over the flexor surface of the forearm, so we have our flexor muscles there. They become tendinous as they come over the carpal joint. Now the carpal joint with uh, the horseman is often called the knee. Uh, that corresponds to our carpus. It's a very uh, multiple joint there, has lots of joint surfaces, it's quite complex. Uh, then as she comes down over the cannon bone, again her left hand is over the, feeling the, the extensor tendons there, and her right hand is feeling the flexor tendons. All right, they come and gather at the, at the fetlock joint, uh, the, so that's the joint that's just uh, several inches off the ground there and then it blends into what we call the pastern or the coffin joints uh, into that area. Now we're going to stop there because we are go and treat the foot uh, a little bit later here because that's a, sort of another complex system. But this is basically what we're doing with the front leg and now we'll move to the back leg. Now on the back leg, one of the first things that Dr. Forney is going to do again is palpate that muscle mass, looking for symmetry, feeling for symmetry, uh, but you can stand back and observe there. You can get both hind legs in view very nicely, so it's one of the important things we do is stand and observe it. All right, as she starts to put her hands on it again, she, over the tubrillium there, she has, uh, it's a place that gets damaged a lot. Horses run into things and, and, and hurt themselves there, so you want to make sure, again, that it's symmetrical, there's no pain involved there. Uh, she's coming down over the, the stifle area here. Her left hand is on the front of the stifle. Lots of ligaments uh, involved with the stifle, so you pay attention to those. She's coming down over the Gaskin area here. Onto the hock joint. Her left hand is at the, the uh, front of the, the hock joint. There's, you can feel a number of joint spaces there. Her uh, right hand is over the point of the hock. Uh, so we palpate that area looking for joint effusions, swellings. As we come down the cannon bone, her left hand is over the, again, the extensor surface, the extensor tendons. Now the anatomy on the hind leg below the hock is almost identical to the anatomy 
uh, below the carpus on the front leg. So again, she's feeling flexor tendons coming down to the fetlock joint, um, sesamoid bones, down onto the pastern, and to the coffin joints. So that concludes the pretty much the palpations that we do on the the uh, over the body and the the legs on the horse. We're going to move on to the foot and show you some specific things about that. You know, on a more detailed examination of the foot, uh, things you want to know about the anatomy, we have the coronary band there. We have the bulbs of the heel. This is where the hoof, the horny hoof actually joins the body. We're paying attention here as we see the horse just standing. We're paying attention to the shape of the foot, the size of the foot. Does the foot uh, sort of fit that horse, belong to that horse? Uh, it's often beneficial to stand off to the side a little bit and see exactly how the heel touches the ground, how the bulb of the heel uh, has a relationship to the ground surface at the heel. Uh, this is where a lot of the weight of the horse is transmitted to the ground. You want to make sure that that's as a mechanically proportioned properly. You pick up the foot. The anatomy here, again, the bulbs of the heel, you're seeing the frog, the central sulcus of the frog, the lateral medial sulcus of the frog. These are important areas that you want to examine for thrush, foreign bodies, and so on. We're going to pay attention to the sole, the consistency of the sole, whether it's paper thin, is prone to bruising or not. You have the white line, which is the junction there between the sole and the wall of the foot. Um, we see a lot of problems there with laminitis, and so it's a telltale area for us to look at. Of course, you have the wall, the outer horny wall surrounding the foot there. Again, we're paying attention to size and quality of that the bottom part of the foot. So it's a very detailed structure, uh, so there is a lot to learn about the foot. <laughs> this covers the musculoskeletal system as a part of a general physical examination. Of course, there are many ancillary diagnostics that can be performed, things like uh, radiology or ultrasound. Sure, we will uh, often ask the horse to move. Um, sometimes we do very intricate movements with it, and we do what we call flexion tests um, with it. Diagnostic nerve blocks? Diagnostic nerve blocks would be another thing. Uh, another high-tech thing we do are bone scans, where we actually are doing some um, nuclear medicine that way. Um, and don't forget that if we really think we have a, a muscle problem, we can take uh, biopsies of the muscle, take a little piece sure. of muscle and, and have it looked at with the, uh, under the microscope. Sure, muscle biopsies. But this will do right now for physical examination. We'll show you these things further in, in the lameness exam. We can see that Jenny is very bored with us all. 